Okay, we are back here on the bright side. I'm not sure if anybody, uh, I'm not sure what that was about here, but we'll forego our introduction. Hopefully, if you guys are listening to the program, you know who I am and what I'm doing. So, let's get right into it here. We're talking about uh, the generic nature of disease. We've been talking about vitamin E, dementias, and how dementias really are the manifestation of just standard generic old breakdown in the body. Vitamin E is tremendously multifunctional and its multifunctionality has to do with the fact that it addresses the humble little cell. And this little cell, the breakdown of this little cell, is what accounts for chronic degenerative diseases of all kinds. Whether we're talking about the disease in the brain, diseases in the brain, we're talking about diseases in the heart, the blood vessels, the liver, or anywhere else. The fact that vitamin E is cell protective gives it multifunctionality. It's protective against excitotoxins, MSG, from flavor chemicals. Interestingly, by the way, one of the main pharmaceutical strategies for dealing with Alzheimer's disease are drugs that block excitotoxins. In fact, the drug Namanda, Mamantine, chemical name, works by blocking excitotoxicity. Now, it doesn't work very well because while there may be an element of excitotoxicity when it comes to Alzheimer's, there's still the dead and disrupted and broken and sick brain cells that have to be dealt with. And there's still the low blood oxygen that has to be dealt with. And there's still the malnutrition of the brain cells that has to be, de- has to be dealt with. And there's nothing that drugs can do to address malnutrition of cells, low blood oxygen, or toxicity. There's nothing the Manda can do or any other drug. Even the package insert that comes with the medication, Namanda, N-A-M-E-N-D-A, by the way, even the package insert says, quote, there's no evidence that memantine, which is the chemical name, prevents or slows neurodegeneration in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Can you believe this? This is the drug. This is the drug that's marketed for Alzheimer's disease. And right in the package insert, it says, there's no evidence that it works. This is the craziness of our medical model. Now, why would somebody take a drug when there's no evidence that it works? Because we don't realize that drugs are poisons and toxins that need to be cleared out by the body. Oh, yeah. Namanda is also being recommended for Parkinson's disease. How interesting is that? What is that telling you when the same drug is recommended for two different diseases? It tells you that researchers are thinking that the mechanisms behind both diseases are the same, and they are. Parkinson's disease is Alzheimer's disease of the back of the brain, the substantia nigra, the movement center of the brain. Likewise, Alzheimer's disease is Parkinson's disease of the thinking part of the brain. They're the same disease in a different place. Yesterday, an article or a study was published in the journal Science Signaling found the same vascular blood vessel symptoms of atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, is found in the brain of dementia patients. The same thing. Heart disease is Alzheimer's disease. Headline. I'm not kidding you here. This is the headline. Atherosclerosis is Alzheimer's disease of blood vessels. Where have you heard this before? We talk about it every day. All diseases are the same thing. You don't need a journal article from uh, uh, science signaling to corroborate this. It's just common sense. Atherosclerosis is Alzheimer's disease of blood vessels. Now, they didn't say that uh, atherosclerosis is Alzheimer's disease of the circulatory system, but they might as well have. This is the key point, the major point, of what I call the bright side philosophy or the bright side approach to chronic degenerative disease. From a healing perspective, from a cell perspective, this is where all healing and all disease began. From a, from a cell perspective, diseases are all the same. And this is the idea of simplexity that we talked about yesterday. The simple underlying threads that run beneath, run underneath, or run as the fabric of the quilt of disease. No matter how complicated the quilt is, no matter how elaborate the quilt is, it's got threads. It could be crazy baroque and elaborate and complicated on the surface, the quilt and the blanket can be, but it's a couple of threads that are creating it. The same basic threads underlie all chronic degenerative disease. Talked about the first one yesterday, the cell. 
hundreds of different types of cells, 200 different types of cells in the body. But if you're dealing with a CDD, one of those types of cells, guarantee is sick, is broken, is disrupted, is perturbed. And that is great news if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease. Because while cells aren't going to listen to the doctor, cells are not responsive to the medical model unless, well, I shouldn't say that. Cells are responsive to the medical model if they're killed or if they're removed entirely or if they're poisoned. But if you want to help a cell, if you want to restore a cell back to optimum functioning or at least prevent it from, from dividing into dysfunctional cells, you need the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. That's cell food. What we call the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, the vitamins and the minerals. Those are the, the bare bones minimum requirements that a cell needs to do its business. That's why they're essential. They're like water to water and food are to the human. The mighty 90 essential nutrients are to the cell. A cell is a little microcosm of a human being. And just like the human being needs nutrition, the cell needs nutrition as well. The mighty 90 essential nutrients are what the cell eats. The vitamins, the minerals, the essential fatty acids, the essential amino acids. These are cell food. It's what the cell eats. Oxygen is cell air. And a clean environment... For the cell to do its work means cleanse of excess sugar, which is a toxin, excess acid, which is cell waste, excess radiation and non-nutritional metals and other poisons that, that we've, uh, in our infinite wisdom as human beings, have, have uh, saturated our environment with. And that includes drugs, by the way. That's all a cell needs, you guys. They're not going to listen to a doctor, but they need... They're not going to listen or they're not going to pay attention to, to the drugs or the surgical procedures or the radiation or whatever the heck a doctor's doing. But what they will listen to are the mighty 90 essential nutrients, oxygen, and a clean place to do their work, a detoxified place to do their, to do their work. Be be beneath all organ, system, tissue disease, you will find a messed up cell. If we think we got a bad heart or we have Alzheimer's disease or eczema or psoriasis, we're missing the point. And this is true about cancer especially, by the way. Nothing exemplifies cellular dysfunction more than the disease cancer. Yesterday, uh, President Obama in his State of the Union speech, yes, I listened to his State of the Union speech, just, I don't know why, I just wanted to see what he was gonna say. Didn't say anything, of course, except how great the last eight years were. I don't know where he's been living. Anyway, President Obama said uh, that we're gonna cure cancer. Just like we walked on the moon, he repeated this crazy, ignorant medical claim. We're going to cure cancer just like we walked on the moon. But if you've been listening to this program, you understand about cancer, you, and you understand what cancer really is, and cancer's relationship to stressed out cells, you know, you don't cure cancer. Cancer is a response to a tweaked out environment, a toxic cellular environment, a starved cellular, cellular environment, and a hypoxic, low oxygen cellular environment. And this is why cancers almost always return. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we're back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have questions about the longevity products or if you want to contribute to the conversation, we're talking about cancer, Alzheimer's disease, vitamin E, and most importantly, the generic nature of all chronic degenerative diseases. This, whole, this idea that there's all these special illnesses and special diseases does not serve us, the individual. It serves the power structure, it makes us give up. Learned helplessness is the psychological term. Learned helplessness is the best friend of all power trips, all authority structures. They like us to, be, to, to learn to be helpless. This is what the idea of curing cancer is about. Oh, we need some kind of medical genius to cure the disease. We're just sitting here minding our own business, and cancer attacked us. This isn't about blaming the victim, by the way. This is about empowerment, taking our power back. Obama said yesterday, medical research is critical, as if cancer disease is some kind of mystery, and we need medical research to tell us what's going on with cancer. 
What are the, how much medical research do we need? Do you know how much medical research we've had over, uh, in dealing with cancer since the war on cancer kicked in in 1970? Oh, by the way, since then, uh, cancer diagnoses have gone up 60%. Yes, we're living longer, by the way. This is what doctors consider to be success. We're living longer. And maybe it is a success, but have you ever seen anybody living longer with cancer on chemotherapy? It is not a pretty sight. It is not a pretty sight. As we said yesterday, cancers, the body is protected against cancer. Cancers are not supposed to occur. The body is protected. There's eight mechanisms that the body has. And there are eight ways that the cancer cell has to, there are eight safety steps or safety valves that the, that the cancer has to, uh, has to uh, bypass or has to take advantage of. Cancer cells ignore anti-growth signals. Cancer cells have their own signals. They become autonomous in, in terms of cell sig- in terms of cell uh, interpreting cell signals. Usually, a cell is not going to grow unless its neighbors give it permission to grow. That's how cooperative the cell the the cellular community is. They only grow when they're allowed to grow by their neighbors. How cool is that? There are anti-growth signals that are secreted by the by a, a cancer by a cell's neighbors. There's also a programmed cell death. Cells are programmed to die, so they can't reproduce uh, immortally. Cells have figured out how to become immortal by using enzymes that, uh, that help extend the little shoestring called telomere. You probably have heard of that. Longevity has some telomere extending products, anti-aging products. And this is, a, this is an anti-aging strategy, actually, to keep telomeres from shriveling up uh, too fast. Telomeres are like little shoestrings that are hanging out from a cell, being metaphorical here. And as a cell divides and divides and divides, the shoestring kind of begins to break down and disintegrate and gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And then when there's no more telomere, the cell just dies. It doesn't reproduce any longer. Cells, cancer cells have figured out how to bypass that. Cancer cells have figured out how to bypass the body's immune system. Cancer cells have figured out how to use energy incredibly fast. Cancer cells extract uh, energy from sugar super duper fast, unfortunately very inefficiently. That's why they don't do their work. Cancer cells have figured out how to attract blood vessels, their own personal uh, concierge of nutrition. How do you like that? Basically sugar, by the way. Cancer cells have figured out a way to hijack the circulatory system so that bl- they'll get, have their own personal supply of blood vessels. That's pretty amazing. You got you to give the, the cancer cell some credit here. And then, as if all that weren't enough, cancer cells have figured out how to spread to other parts of the body, so-called metastases. They'll actually navigate their way through the circulatory system. They can actually dig holes in the circulatory system to enter into different parts of the body. They figured out a way to spread. This is a very common thing that cells do when they mutate, by the way. When cells mutate, they spread. That's the next step after mutation is spreading. So in any case, cancer is not supposed to happen. It only happens when a cell is burdened beyond, uh, it doesn't know what else to do. It's at its wit's end. And you don't cure cancer. What you do is you prevent it from occurring. You change the environment. No more than you cure uh, a plant that has fungus on it. You don't cure a plant of fungus. You change the soil. Cancer cells only exist in a soil, in the appropriate soil, for those cancer cells to exist in. How do you get rid of cancer? How do you change cancer? You gotta change the soil. You gotta change the ground that the cancer cells are thriving or the the cancer cells are proliferating in. Cancer is the ultimate example of being fooled by complexity. On the surface, it looks like just this incredible, disastrous mess. You got all these triggering factors. Doctors will tell you uh, they don't know what causes cancer specifically because what they're doing is they're looking at what are called secondary causes. Secondary causes are things like radiation or particular drugs or, or other kinds of poisons. Those are secondary causes. But all cancer cells have only one primary cause. They are sugar burners. They don't burn oxygen. They burn sugar. This is an inefficient way of, uh, inefficient way of extracting energy to do their business. But over the course of time, as a, a cancer cell becomes deprived of oxygen, it doesn't know what else to do. And by the way, cells are always becoming cancerous. But these mechanisms, these, the, these safety steps that we talk about, keep the, keep the cancer from growing. So funct, uh, thread number one, the, uh, 
the simple thread that runs behind all chronic degenerative diseases, no matter how complicated and complex they seem on the, seem on the outside, is the cell. That's the first distinction to make if you want to reverse your, your Alzheimer's disease, your arthritis, your autoimmune disease, your cancer, your acne, your whatever. If your disease is not getting better, the first distinction you want to make if you